assistant at The Lobe this year. So this is the first episode of our new series, Nature and Art. Obviously, there's a lot that can be said about nature and art. Um, nature and art is about as old as art itself. But in today's video, I'll be focusing on pressing flowers and cyanotypes. So today I'll be talking about three works that we've selected, but of course there are many, many more that I could be talking about, and you can come see them at the Loeb here on campus or on our website. Every flower is unique, and a flower is an ephemeral object, right? Once you pick it, it doesn't live very long. And so art is one of the ways that we can preserve its beauty or transform its beauty into something else through pressing flowers, photography, botanical drawings, etc. And so what I'd like you to think about throughout the video is how do we capture the transience of nature, the beauty of the flower, what are the different advantages of photography or pressing flowers or drawing and how these affect the way the flower is preserved. All right, so starting us off, we have a work from the 19th century. The 18th and 19th centuries are considered the golden age of botanical art. So this painting is called The Botanist and it's by Alfred Rohner, a Belgian painter. And so here we see a young woman studying pressed flowers. She's very focused on her activity. She's supposed to be this role model of enlightenment through your own study. Um, she is an earnest young woman. And this was actually an early acquisition by Vassar when it was still a women's college, so she could have served as a role model for the student. But what I think is interesting about this painting is we can see how pressing flowers can serve dually as a scientific and as an artistic activity. There's this beautiful quote by Wilfred Blunt who wrote The Art of Botanical Illustration. The greatest flower painters have been those who have found beauty in truth who have understood plants scientifically, who have yet seen them with the eye and the hand of the artist. For example, like in this painting, the act of pressing flowers can duly serve as a scientific and artistic activity, dissecting the flowers, measuring them, comparing them, drawing. All of this, you can see beauty in all of this. So the advent of photography brought about new ways to observe plants even more closely and more minute detail. So the next example we're going to see was actually also made um, for scientific purposes, but can be considered as an art object. So this cyanotype was made by Anna Atkins in 1845. She's considered one of the earliest female photographers. So to achieve this kind of work, you take a piece of paper or fabric that you leave in a mixture of chemicals, and then you put a semi-transparent paper or object or plant on it and expose it to the sunlight. And so whatever the sunlight touches will turn blue or cyan. This is also where the term blueprint comes from. In this example, the plant is portrayed in a somewhat simplistic way. We don't have any of the nuances of colors or movement that you would have if the plant was represented as it was. Instead, we can think about the silhouette and the shape, the transparency of the leaves, and different elements that might fall into the background in a different type of drawing. For this technique, we can also think about what it would look like if we layered different flowers and different transparencies. The next example uses a similar technique, um, but it was made much, much later in 1997 by Japanese artist Sugiura. So she takes flowers and string and places them on photosensitive paper and then exposes that to the sunlight. But in order to achieve this background, that it almost looks like the flowers are floating on water, in order to achieve this effect, she pours hot water onto the paper while it's developing, which creates a tonal variety in the background, which gives it so much more depth. It almost looks like its own type of plant, since they're all branching out from the same root or source, and it looks like a plant that's composed of all kinds of different flowers. So the artist has said that her main focus is capturing light, time, the transits of nature, and its memory which all four of those things can be seen here. The way she plays with the light in the background, the way she manages to incorporate movement, which implies time, the way the plants are preserved, so the transits of nature, and obviously memory goes with that too. So as you have seen in these examples, there are many different ways in which we can capture nature or flowers. You can press them, thus preserving the physical object and the colors. You can focus more on silhouettes the way Anna Atkins does. You can focus on movement and harmony the way Suyura does. So I hope these paintings have given you a bit of inspiration, different ideas on how to work with plants. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Bye!